What brings a girl from Corning, New York out to Utah? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you uh, joining us and spending a bit of time with us and learning more about a, a, a wonderful story from Mary uh, Gavin. So, Mary, thanks for coming and sharing. Thank you for having story. me. I know you're not 100% today. <laughs> you're uh, a little under the weather, but yeah. we appreciate you coming and sharing. And I love to tell my story. Well, I mentioned Corning, New York. Tell me where you were born. I was born in Corning, yeah, um, Steuben County, New and, York. And is that where the Corning Ware comes from? Yeah, that's it Corning is. Ware. My dad worked there. He oh, designed he Corning Ware and yeah. other big things like a tunnel in New York City. <laughs> but now they've sold all their dishes. Oh, have they? Company. Mm -hmm. Off to somebody else. Huh? Yeah. So tell us, uh, you were born, uh, were you born into the church? Or were you a member? No, of I was converted when I was 19. Oh. I was in, um, I had just finished um, a second year of college and I had applied at Utah State and the missionaries kept coming to our home and um, I didn't pay any attention to them for a long time. At one time they cornered me and I w really wasn't interested. Were they teaching your parents or were they my trying mom. to teach you? Oh, oh, your mom, okay. Yeah. And um, just the more they reached out to me, I was... Um, real impressed. And um, I remember one time we were gathered in a circle and they had us hold hands and I'd never prayed out loud before. I grew up Methodist and it was a very liberal Methodist church. Okay. And your parents went to, to the no, Methodist No, we went until I was about 12. Oh, okay. And um, so I, I became a member of the Methodist Church. So I learned all that stuff that you have to learn to become a member. Yeah. And um, but anyway, I'd never prayed bef out loud before. So um, he ha he asked me to pray, and I did. And then the missionary, I remember, it was Guillermo Angiano <laughs> from Mexico, and he prayed, and he actually cried, and he um, asked me if I would go pray. Oh, actually, I didn't pray. <laughs> That's why he prayed and cried. <laughs> and asked that I go pray quietly somewhere and ask if, the, you know, if I'd get that burning in my, ask if the church sure. was doing if I'd get that burning in my bosom. And I was so, you know, the emotions of someone crying and asking you to do that. I did that. And I did yeah, get so, that like when you watch a great movie, yeah, get that same feeling. I, I've had that too. Yeah, and um, and I took the lessons, and I rem my friend, my best friend was a Catholic girl, and she actually came and sat on several of them, and um, I remember the missionaries telling us that the thing that the Mormon Church had over the Catholic Church was that the Catholic Church's doctrines were always changing. <laughs> and you know that God had restored the you know the the way that God wanted it right. into the Mormon Church, and of course at that point I didn't know <laughs> how much the Mormon Church had changed things. And they didn't tell you all that. No, they, they didn't tell me all that. And um, so I also asked him. I said, now how can I know for sure that the prophet? wouldn't lead me astray, yeah. you know, wouldn't say something that wasn't true. Oh, God would destroy the prophet before he'd ever let you lead him astray. Yeah, that's, that's the line, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I was devastated years later. When you found out differently. After yeah. five children and, oh. and been working my butt off in the <laughs> church, living, you know, doing all those jobs that they call you to do, at the sacrifice many times of my family. Oh, sure. Yeah. And um, so I felt very, very angry. Yeah. Well, now, backing up just a little bit, you mentioned you'd chosen Utah State. Why did you? And this wasn't because you were now a convert no. to the church. This was before that. It's so because that? I loved Wild Kingdom on Sunday nights yeah. with Marlon Perkins. <laughs> and I always wanted to be a wildlife biologist. Oh. So that's why I went there. And they offer a great program mm. up there, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. So you're converted to the church. Do you do you 
Now, you've already mentioned a couple of things, but do you remember them teaching you a lot? Uh, what was the main focus of what they were teaching, do you think? The restoration. Joseph Smith. And Joseph Smith being the, the true Mormon prophet of and God. And, um, the, that things had to be restored and how, how false and wrong the other churches were. And the Protestants and mm -hmm. the Catholics. And, yeah. yeah. And the need for a restoration, yeah. the need for mm -hmm. a prophet and all that. And did they challenge you to read the Book of Mormon? And, they did. Yeah. I, I never really did a good job reading it, I have to be honest. <laughs> so many people may say, well, that's why she left. But, I mean, of course, I you know, got into it more as I was in the church. But Now, there's another little interesting twist here about uh, your last little time in, in Corning and maybe the last missionary that comes into your life. Yeah. Um, Tell us about that. Let's see. Randy was came to our area for just about a month and a half before it was his last area before he went home and I actually really hit it off with his companion he was a funny guy now had you already converted by then yes I'd okay. already been baptized the okay. um, two that baptized me were Scott Roberts and Guillermo Angano okay Scott Roberts was from Provo and um, Elder Angano was from Mexico, Mexico yeah. and um, <laughs> I mean our, we got to be I mean, you just love your missionaries. Oh, sure. They mean and, so much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we had family pictures taken with them and everything. <laughs> and everyone in my family got baptized except my sister was at college. She was an archaeologist, and she couldn't buy the archaeological um, things that the church was promoting. Oh. And, um, About the Book of Mormon, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. And so she didn't, but everyone else, uh, I have, there's six kids in my family, so all five, none of them, the they, none of them stayed active in the church. Including mom and Including dad? my parents. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, I didn't ask, how close is Corning to, say, Camorra? Uh, Hill close. Camorra, and it's just, the, like, the, maybe an hour away. In that general area. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. I was in the Hill Camorra pageant the, my first oh, you were. year, and, you know, it was the year the hot pants and short, real short stuff were in style. And I remember I just made all these clothes. I made a lot of my own clothes and I bought, I had a job, so I bought clothes too. But I, when I went to the pageant, they said you had to be able to get on your knees and your stuff had to touch the touch. floor. Okay. So I made more clothes and my father, he just laughed at me and told me how ridiculous that I looked. Anyway, I went to pageant and the shocking thing was they brought out three busfuls of BYU students to right. be in the pageant because we didn't have as many converts back in those days to be members of the crew mm -hmm. and they had short skirts on and I thought <laughs> well that's not fair yeah <laughs> and Randy actually him and his grandparents and parents came he wor had worked at a summer camp of one of the um, families that he'd gotten close to on his mission and so he came out and I was so excited to see him I actually went up and gave him a hug it was the first hug that he had after his mission. <laughs> and so it might have a little, little bit of a spark, but um, anyway, he invited us to go to stop by his house on the way to Utah State. Of course, my father looked at the map and thought, well, that's not too far. But from New York to... <laughs> well, no, from Arizona to oh, yeah. Utah, but it was big, far. Yeah. And as we went across in the Arizona side, the welcome to Arizona sign, it was a curve and somebody dropped a fruit crate on the ground and we were pulling a trailer and my father got three flat tires out on the Navajo Indian Reservation mm. and we could not find, every gas station was like the drunk, the Indians were oh. inebriated and Oops. <laughs> I, cause I'd never been out west and saw all the trucks shot full of holes and I mean it was pretty amazing but well what was bringing you to Arizona I guess to fill in the story well just bit. to visit my oh. parents loved Randy too I mean he got to be oh real was, close he in, was he in Arizona at that time yep he'd gone home already oh, remember right and oh and he was from so he Arizona. went home in March okay and then so we went out there Arizona. I think in August oh, I see okay and um but you do, do end up at Utah State do you Yep, I end up up at Utah State, and Randy made five, five trips, actually, up there. His best friend, he'd drop off in Provo to visit his girlfriend, and then he'd 
go up to Arizona, and then we got married in February. I'll be darned. <laughs> Did you have those sparks at all on his mission? No. No. No just, sparks. Just an, an acquaintance at yeah. that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you're still very active in the church and doing all you're supposed to be doing? I'm no, assuming. we left the church. Um, well, I didn't mean now, but oh. I mean back then when you... Oh, were, yes, we were very we were active for, in the church. You got married in the Mesa Temple. Got and, married in the Mesa Temple and um, lived in Mesa for a while, and then we moved to Kanab. And Randy actually manned them. Randy always had a missionary heart, always. And we manned the missionary... Um, they had an outside, um, a, you know, sunken thing where we shot a film and would talk to people after. Oh. And, and I remember one time we had this Jewish fellow who was backpacking through. He was a um, Hasidic Jew with the big yeah, huge yeah. beard. Anyway, we got chatting with him for a long time, and he came to our home and spent the night. And I remember Randy chatting with him with the Bible open, and I cannot remember what verse he came to where Randy would remember, but <laughs> about Christ and that he just he took Randy's hand and put it on his chest and said, "Feel my heart." You know, he 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 felt something about Christ that he'd never Hearing felt that before. Anyway, we so we had Christian experiences oh. while we were Mormon. Really, I think. Really. God was pricking, moving us that way. <laughs> but we uh, were very active. Um, then we moved to Salt Lake, and Randy became the stake mission president. Now they don't have those anymore, but... Right. Um, but he was very active, and you were and, active, I guess, in callings. So. Yeah, and he um, did all the interviews for people that went through the Salt Lake Visitor Center and wanted to be baptized and stuff. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was a primary president a few times, and mm. um, you know we were very active. And then our neighbor, I think I was pregnant with my fourth child, yep. And um, our neighbor was a high councilman across the street. And Randy had gotten a let that letter. Uh, um, Eugene England letter that, that talked about the Brigham Young thing. Oh, of course, you know Randy on his mission had had the experience with the yeah, yeah, we, the Brigham we'll Young get to meet him Adam next God time, thing. and I think he'll yeah. probably share that story. And, yeah. So our neighbor across the street gave Randy that letter, and I was pregnant, and so Randy started researching it. And I, Randy would work all day, and he'd stay up all night long. And one morning, I woke up, and he was. He had tears running down his face. And I said, oh my gosh, Randy, what's wrong? And he said, Mary, the church isn't true. And, you know, he started telling me, and I was absolutely devastated. Because, I mean, I loved the church. Sure. And, um, and how long had you been in it at this point? It's um, let's see, it was 83. So, I don't know, not too long. <laughs> 10 or 15 years, yeah. it sounds like. But. And so I had a, just a miserable pregnancy. The rest of the time I just cried. I mean, it was just an awful time for us. And Well, did he share anything specific? Yes, what he did. He? he went through all the stuff with yeah. me. What did you think? And had uh, you heard any of this before? I'd never heard any of it before. Yeah. No, you, and just I to was, back up, though, you, you feel like you had a testimony of the church? Oh, yes. You were working and I didn't want And then I and, thought, I thought probably what most of the Mormons think, I thought, well, if this isn't true, I guess nothing's true and there's no God. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> that where was I your first reaction. That's where I went with it. Yeah. And then I thought, and if there is a God, he is one mean person to put me in this position that I'm in now. And all the sacrifice and all the effort. But I have to tell you, the, the cool part was through my kids and um, I got to know this little Christian gal who was also homeschooling her. I... My first three were in public school, but my last girls I homeschooled. Mm. And I got to know my friend, and she went to Bible study fellowship here in Salt Lake. Oh, yeah. And she encouraged me to go, and they were doing the book of Matthew that year. And I mean, I was a very angry person, very depressed. I mean, I actually wanted to kill myself several times. Oh. And um, I went to that Bible study with her, and I 
tell you, it was like God spoke to me personally. Just opened the Bible and you were... And every week when I'd go, people would say, oh my gosh, you know, I never saw that before. I mean, and I, then I thought, you know, if I hadn't had this experience of being a Mormon, I never would have really appreciated you know, I got I saw what a Pharisee was because I had been one. <laughs> Proud and yeah. and uh, and a Matthew. I mean, I saw how, you know, I was one of those converts that, you know, yeah. was more the child of hell than the people that converted me. I mean, I was so sold out to the church, I would have done anything that they asked me to do. Well, except maybe polygamy. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have done that one, but <laughs> Uh, Eventually, maybe. But, <laughs> yeah. but um, it was a very painful time for me. But that was, that was a beautiful time, you know, to to see God. Yeah. And He just did a miracle in my life right then. Well, did you start? Did you kind of challenge Randy at all? I mean, oh was, yes, we almost got a divorce. Our. Um, I mean, my, it's very hard for one spouse to yes. come to another and say. My, I, I think we're even wrong, going our, the wrong my, way. our bishop and my husband's even his mom encouraged me to find somebody else to take me you know to, so I could be temple, temple and um, but I remember one Sunday I had had my fifth or yeah fifth child and we had started going to Southeast Christian Church and that's a big long story but um, I remember it was a terrible Sunday because we fought a lot then during that time, Randy and I did. And, um, and we'd always been just so Just personal love. issues or just... Well, it was, it was all religion? religious was stuff. Was it really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sundays were Horrible. hellish days. <laughs> but anyway, if Randy got ta had talked me into going to this church, and the people were so nice. I was very impressed. I mean, when I went in there, I was so convicted about coffee that, it was that when I went in there, the first thing I smelled was sin. I mean, they had a big coffee pot and goodies. Sin. <laughs> yeah. And so... Well, we feel that way, don't we, yeah. as good members of the church? I mean, those things we just... Yeah. yeah. And so um, Randy had told our friend who was a high councilman there, and he, he told the people, he says, how can we expect to minister to people in Salt Lake if the first thing they smell when they walk through the door is sin? So they moved the coffee up into a higher room and... Um, had some other drink down there now, and I was so touched that they would do that oh. for me. That that was that log <laughs> that got moved right yeah. then, yeah. and made it so that I could, you know, see past it. Yeah. And um, but anyway, that one Sunday, we I went. I'd stay. We'd had a bad Sunday. And I stayed out in the car with the baby. I said, I'm just. I'll stay out in the car. You go to church. Anyway, I went in the church and sat in the cry room and. They had the call for people to come up front, and Randy and my youngest son went. Wow. And I was absolutely devastated. I sure. thought, that's it. We're, our marriage is over. <laughs> I am done. And um, He's broken the covenants of yeah. temple marriage. and yeah. Well, I just thought, I don't want to be with somebody that is going to do that. Yeah. So anyway... Um, but, like I said, then I got to that Bible study and God worked things out. But What, what specifically influenced you? Did you have a born-again moment? or? Did, did, oh, or just, many, many, you, many. When I went through Matthew, I mean, you it was share? like God, well, like I said, the one in, um, were the Pharisees and sending out missionaries to go over land and sea to make converts yeah. who are twice the children of hell as you. Uh -huh. I mean, I was so convicted I could see here poor Christ is out trying to reach these people. And they're, they have all their phylacteries. Yeah. And they're doing all these things that they think are right. And be, their own righteousness, just like we as Mormons. I know. We had our own righteousness. We yeah. thought we were we, so good. Yeah. And yet. And that was going to please God. We couldn't. They couldn't see Christ who was right there yeah. in their midst. They couldn't see him or accept his message because of those things, yeah. their own righteousness. Isn't that amazing? And I was convicted of, of my sin because, see, I always thought I was pretty good. Pretty good person. Well, we do. We, we're so proud, and we think we're in the only true church, and we've just yeah. got it all nailed down. We're married in the temple. We're headed in the right direction. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I mean, I think the most confusing thing for me coming out of the church was how different, like we went to lots of churches when we first came out. We were looking for the true church because that's what the Mormons make you think, <laughs> that there's a true church. And um, every, for, of course, the coffee got me every time. And, and then other things. And I just, I mean, it took me a while to get through that there. And well, Randy actually, he prayed about it. And I mean, there is no true church. You know, Christ. Yeah, it's our relationship is, yeah, with Jesus. Jesus. It's between us and Him. Mm -hmm. and had you understood grace at all? No. And works? No. Uh, how those interrelate as a Mormon? Not as a Mormon, no. Yeah. Now, back, you were 19 when you converted. Had, had they talked about grace in the no, Methodist I remember church the, that you remember? The first, um, I remember the first counseling I had as a Mormon was the um, second counselor who was a, a big up guy in the Corning Glassworks. He um, took me aside and pointed out that you never can say no to a calling of the church because it comes directly from God. <laughs> and they put me in charge of a road show f right <laughs> the first few days after I was in the church. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to it's run a road show. Something you've never done before. And I never saw one either. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> And um, anyway, so you do sacrifice a lot as a Mormon. I mean, yeah. When you've got little tiny kids, the time, and you're uh, yeah. and back in those days, you went twice on Sunday and during the week. That's right. And if well, you had primary a, and religious yeah. society was during the week. And if you had a position, yeah. you went more. Even an know? hour or so earlier. I mean, Randy and I passed each other. <laughs> going, we were that busy going to meetings and stuff. Yeah, and I feel bad because my kids missed out on a lot from us as parents. Yeah. And you know, Mormons are supposed to be so family oriented, but they I, sacrifice they really, a lot for their yeah, families. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So, at some point, you understand grace. Did that was that a surprise to you? Yes. You realized that it was all about Jesus. Yeah. And not about you. <laughs> well, and this being realizing you're a sinner, I mean, that's when you need the grace. You realize you need grace. Yeah. Because you... we always say in Mormons, uh, as Mormons, that we weren't perfect, but we never really said we were sinners. And, yeah. Right? And I think the hardest part, I mean, we were close with so many people. And it's like once you question the church and with facts, yeah. people are afraid of you and they just cut you off. And the leadership is mean to you. If and you ask questions. If you ask or, questions. Yeah. And to this day, I cannot get an audience with anyone. <laughs> so, I think. Well, that's, it's just fascinating, the difference. And I know it's, it's a complete kind of switch of, uh, of our thinking. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden we're realizing that the Bible has value. Did you ever... Did you ever trust the Bible as a Mormon? No. No. You're always told to read the Book of Mormon. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pray about it. And polygamy always troubled me. Yeah, you mentioned that. But you knew we were going to live it in the celestial kingdom, Yeah, but kingdom, Randy and I would you? stay up at night many times. Talk about talk it. Talk about it. And I'd say, now, what do you think about that? Are you ever going to do it? And he'd say, God would have to come to me. Or no, he... Personally, say, well, we and I say, well, God would have to come to you Himself personally, right, and tell you <laughs> that this is that that's what. So we he finally agreed that that's what would have to happen <laughs> <laughs> for you to for you to live it and Him to live it. Well, it's fascinating. So you you mentioned you've had how you've had how many children? Five. Five. Mm -hmm. And have they been able to? Have you been able to share the your well, journey with kids, them? Well, our kids our um, kids were young when we left. Oh. So they didn't really grow up. Yeah. They were all um, blessed when they were babies, every one of them. But but not baptized. But or? Not well. Uh, the first um, one was baptized. Oh. Okay. Randy baptized him in the um, tavern under the tabernacle there. Oh. Oh, really? In, in Temple, Temple Square. Temple Square. Oh, fascinating. Well, it's, it's such an interesting journey you've had. You marry a, a missionary that yeah. was in your area, and you come when out I, and... I made out well. He's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Couldn't have done better. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing your story. Anything yes. you want to say to your family or friends? or? Well, 
I want to say I'm still not perfect, still struggle. I mean, I have, my faith has had ups and downs, I have to say. I mean, you know, that's the thing about the Mormon church that I think is the worst, is that you are so brainwashed one direction. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I can't, it was hard for me to, like, up with a pastor to trust a pastor on a human oh, being. Oh, was it really? It's oh, yes. After, after, after the what Mormon you learned thing. the Mormon, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, well, and you don't, not that you don't need to trust them, but you know, you know now that it's between you and God. That's and, right. And that this is just another man, this pastor, yeah. and as our bishops and uh, all the people in the mm -hmm. Mormon church, but they seem to have this air of, of, well, they say they're God's spokesman. And the, <laughs> right. Have the yeah. priesthood and the authority and mm -hmm. all that. Anyway, so for the family, anything else? Um, no, I just am grateful that my family, like when we were younger and leaving, I said, well, can't we just stay in the church anyway? Just because it's the best thing and to raise our family there. And um, Randy would always say, no, I do not want my kids to grow up and then have to struggle with this, you know, when they're adults, because we weren't, we hadn't come to Christ at that point. Right. And, um, but like you said, you were even depressed, and oh, it, very it affected it. And it affected all, it affects all of us. It's a major f impact on our lives. It impacted my first three, and I do feel really bad about that. Yeah. And, you know, those are the kind of things you wish you could go back and change. Of course, you can't. But, um, I, I know the first time our children heard us share our testimony, they were very um, touched. And, About Jesus? Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, you were able to share with them. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, Mary, thanks so much for sharing. You're and welcome. I appreciate your time and, and your story. So, and we'll see you next time on the X Mormon Files.